Okay. We're all looking at the shoes you've got there. What are those? Are those Air Jordan 1s? And are we looking <laughs> to flip them those? What are those? You might be interested. Dave, I'm impressed, mate. They are. They, <gasps> oh, they are. They are Jordan say. ones. If you'd like to purchase them, ha, what size what are, are they? Yeah, selling for? That, that's impressive. What oh. size are they? This is amazing. Live TV. I'm selling Dave Campbell a pair of shoes. <laughs> um, <laughs> How wild was that, guys? I'm always trying to sniff out a sale, even if it's on live TV. Awesome banter, unreal experience to be able to jump on the Today Show this morning and do a bit of breakfast TV. Uh, certainly was the first for me, but uh, an incredible experience and really appreciative to the, the guys for reaching out. They watched my YouTube videos, DM me on Instagram and said, do you want to come on the show? And I said, absolutely. So uh, just a whirlwind experience, but guys, it's Thursday morning. It's trip to the thrift. I don't care what goes on. I'm always going to be out in the thrift on a Thursday bringing you this video because it is my most favorite thing to do on a weekly basis. So you're going to come along for the ride with me today. Nothing different. I've got four op shops to get into. I really want to find some cool stuff to sell on eBay and on Facebook Marketplace. I've got a couple of really cool stories around today as well that I'll share with you guys a little bit later on in the episode. So stick around for that regarding today's interview. But uh, let's dive into the first one, guys. We'll see you in there. <music> First op shop of the day, we are done here. Let me take you through these items. I've been able to find four. There's two op shops right next to each other here in Southport that I've uh, dipped my toes into, and I've come away with some good ones here. I'll kick it off with the shoes. I've been able to find these shoes, these Puma running shoes. They're a women's shoe. They're a US size 10, pink and gray. Very, very good condition, guys, and I do think they'll go on to sell for about 45 bucks free postage. Um, there was no sort of arch support there. You often get the gel arch support in the uh, heel. That's how I know it's a more expensive shoe. This one, more of an entry level, no doubt about it. So 45 bucks free postage due to the condition. Um, paid six bucks, probably profit about 20 to 25. Guys, I am an art about these ones. Now, as you can see here, ASICS Cricket Australia tracksuit pants, size extra large. Thank you very much. I did say, though, to the girls behind the counter, what price could you do for them? and they could only go with 20 bucks. So I have ended up taking them away for me for 20 bucks and I truly believe that they might sell for about $70 because they are brand new with tags. So um, coming into winter, Cricket Australia gear sells very well for me. If you can find anything cricketing Australia related, you'll generally go on to do okay. So I'm gonna try and make myself about a $25 profit there with those, um, not a bad little pickup. Hey, the other one as well is the board games. I do the board games quite a bit. I've got an $8 board game here, Yucky Science. Never heard of it myself, but when I buy board games, there is just one rule, guys brand new and sealed. Too many missing pieces when you get the used stuff. So I don't like to uh, to dabble in that space when it is a used board game. Too many concerns I think could arise. Uh, the other one as well here was the Great Australian Road Trip. As you can see, another brand new sealed board game. It is a little bit heavier though. So I'm hoping I don't get burnt on post here. $10 was to spend. So guys, $44 all up. I've paid $11 per item there. No doubt there will be profit made on every single item. Uh, I'm gonna comfortably say $80 worth of profit would have been made once these all go on to sell. So look, it's not the greatest and grand first op shop run of the day, but I am very, very excited about what we've got ahead today because there are three more runs and I have no doubt we're going to find some good stuff. So we'll see you in a second. Righto guys, op shop run number two. We have dived in and I'm feeling pretty good about it. Been able to find this PlayStation jumper. It's a size small, but I, I really do think some gamer out there is really going to love it. I'm thinking it's going to be maybe a $30 to $35 sort of a sale. So Pretty happy with that one. Hey, uh, had a quick look at the shoes. You guys know I'm always checking for the shoes. These are a really cool pair of men's uh, Adidas equipment 
blue, uh, I think they were a US size 10, so everything was talking to me. Had a look at the price, as you'll see in a second, and they were $14, so uh, I'm sort of on the fence about that, but this was the concern. The soles, for me, it had way too much wear. I saw these as well, these are a pair of Adidas shoes. Um, they like the Pumas that I spoke of earlier, they didn't have any sole support, no, no gel or padding. Um, so more of an entry level shoe, as much as it had a really good sole, uh, for $12, I ended up saying no. This was really cool as well guys, there was a big Nintendo Wii haul that had come into the op shop during the day. And uh, you know, they'd broken it up pretty poorly to be fair on a pricing front. It, they were asking $105 for all of this, $35 a bag. Um, so it worked out to 105 bucks, and that didn't include the games. So I sort of passed on the console and, and I started to have a bit of a look through the games and there was actually some pretty good money. I think all of these are gonna be anywhere between 15 to $20 and I've paid $4 a piece. So we're not talking huge money, but I figured I'd just go ahead and do it. Um, I really do think that I'll be able to sell them in a pretty fast space of time. And I also actually found a Crash Bandicoot game that was hiding on the shelf for $30. So we've spent 74 bucks today. I do think we're up to about 325. Let's go to the next. Well guys, op shop number three. This day is moving along very, very nicely. Um, a stack of clothes in this op shop. It was all games in the second run, but in the third, it just so happens to be clothing, which I'm not too disappointed about. Guys, this is a size medium. The brand is Rivka, Ruka, RBCA, whatever you want to call it. It is a fantastic brand. It's personally one of the brands that I love to wear myself. It was only $4, it's a singlet. I'm gonna try and sell it for about 25 bucks, which would net me about a $10 profit. It's super small profit, but I just love the brand, and if it was my size, I'd be wearing it. So I think it will go on to sell pretty well. Um, I didn't know about this one, to be honest. It was a, a pretty crazy upside down American flag. I don't know if that was too controversial, but I ended up picking it up, more so for the double-sided print on it. It is a Ruka t-shirt, um, so I just went ahead and grabbed it. I don't know how it will be received, but I thought I'd go ahead and grab it anyway. Uh, Ruka, again, just an awesome brand. This one's probably more for myself, um, just a really nice front print on it, as you can see there. Uh, big big Ruka front print, that's pretty much what they're known for, that sort of design. That one's an extra large and I'll probably keep that one for myself. Um, now guys, I sold a pair of 2XU, 2 times u um, shorts, some exercise shorts as you can see here. I do, I did actually sell one for $29.99 I think, or maybe even $35 on eBay just last week, picking it up in a trip to the thrift, sold within about two days. Um, so I've ended up paying $4 for it. They're a really nice pair of men's running shorts. Um, they don't have the inner compression though, the inner lining or the underwear underneath. Um, so for that reason, they might not be as quick of a sell as the ones that I had last week, but I thought for four bucks, I could probably turn it into 30 pretty easy. And then this one here was a vintage Billabong t-shirt. I don't come across a hell of a lot of vintage Billabong, but that logo there is the old school logo. And I really thought that the striped uh, rainbow color pattern was pretty cool on this one as well. So I've gone ahead and picked that one up. Again, that's my size, extra large but I will be putting that one up onto the website at a pretty cheap price if you want to grab yourself some Billabong. Um, and then the last one was the shoes, guys. Now, I'm not I'm not going to sit here and jump around and say how good's this because I'm not 100% sure if these are authentic. I don't know just yet. They are the Nike Air Force One Lows and they are the Liberties. Um, so 
They're a really cool pair of shoes. I've just got a, a few suspicions that they might be a fake. eBay are putting out an authentication center um, pretty soon in Sydney where you can take your sneakers in and you can actually get them verified. Um, so I might actually hold on to these and not list them right away. And when that is set up in Sydney, I might get these authenticated and get them ticked off. So interesting one here. Look, if they're genuine, they're going to be worth a hell of a lot of money. The, the low liberties, uh, Nike Air Force Ones, unbelievable pair of shoes. But, um, and the size on them as well is a, a US uh, nine and a half. It's got all the Nike tags and everything that you'd want, like right there. Like it, it looks genuine, but sometimes the fakes do look genuine. So I'm going to go and get this one tested first and foremost. But if it is, it's going to be a ripping pair in the thrift. Uh, so that was everything. I took a stab on the shoes at 20 bucks and then I bought a heap of clothes. Um, spent $51, basically 30 bucks for all that clothing. And like I said, I'll probably sell the two times two shorts for 30 bucks. So I haven't lost any money in this run. It was a really good run of clothing. And if those Air Forces come off, we're in for a good day. Um, let's move on. Let's finish it. Finish it super strong. I've just got about a two-minute drive for the last top shop. We'll see you in there. Well guys, last op shop of the day and I have come away empty handed, unfortunately. A little bit disappointing because I obviously love to finish the episode uh, with a bang, but uh, not the case. I went into three different op shops and I literally couldn't find anything that was worthwhile. So um, yeah, a little bit disappointing to end the episode, but um, I did want to uh, quickly mention obviously what happened today as well. Um, I had uh, a live interview with the Today Show uh, talking about everything that I'm doing, flipping stuff on eBay, exactly what this channel is all about was what I was, I guess, uh, mentioning on the Today Show. Really nice of them to reach out to me. Uh, it was just through an Instagram message. They said, hey, would you like to jump on the show? We've seen your videos and, and we just wanted to have a chat. So uh, I thought that was really cool. I was happy to, to be a part of it. And it was actually in the end, a, a pretty seamless process to get it sorted. So um, a Daily Mail article was was the result of that as well. Um, you know, that took place yesterday or the day before. Um, so it's just been a really crazy week of, of people reaching out to me. And I guess you don't really know who's watching you when you put out these videos on the internet. And, um, you know, while I really want to get the story and the message across of what I'm doing, um, yeah, it was incredibly nice to the Daily Mail and, and the Today Show to be able to reach out to me. So um, more than happy to take part. And I will put that uh, interview down in the links below for you guys to check out if you if you yet to see it. But um, there was a really crazy scenario right before we went live, um, sort of a behind the scenes moment that I wanted to share with you guys. That there was only one person behind the scenes, which was the cameraman. And it was his job to make sure that I was set up and ready to go. And he had the audio set up in my ears. <clears throat> he had his camera set up and ready to go. And just before 15 seconds before we are live across however many people are watching nationally, um, he said to me, Matt, I, I think your battery's about to go flat during the actual interview, so we need to change it right now. We were going live in 10 to 15 seconds, and now he's telling me that the battery that I've got in my ear for my audio is about to die. So I flipped out and I'm like, mate, I don't know what this thing is. He dropped the camera. He had to put the camera down. It wasn't on a tripod. It was on his shoulder. He had to put it down. The camera's pointing at my feet and we're about to go live and he's changing the batteries on my battery pack and the hosts are about to welcome me into the interview. And I'm just going, this is probably for my first ever live interview, the worst way it could ever go down. And uh, he's changing batteries, double eight batteries on this pack. He, he puts it back in and he goes, quick, okay, good, I'm back into position. And then I said to him, Tony, I can't hear. He hadn't had the volume up, which I didn't realize. He turned the volume down, not up. So that now, now I can't hear anything. The batteries have been changed, but I can't hear a thing. So he's had to put the camera down again in a split second, dial me back up so I can hear them. And as soon as he dialed me back up, they panned back, the camera pans back to the hosts. So you can't actually see what's going on. He's getting himself sorted with the camera and then I can hear them say, Matt, welcome back and, or you know, welcome in. And I, was, and I was able to sort of take care of the interview from there. So upon watching it on playback, it doesn't look like anything really happened. 
but everything happened. It was one of the wildest 30 seconds into a live interview I think you'll ever get. And we only just got there. It could have been a complete disaster, but I thought I'd just share that with you guys to end the episode. Uh, first time I've ever done it. And then Tony said, you know, well done. You did a great job, spoke really well. And I was happy with the way the interview went. It was pretty funny. Obviously, Dave Campbell, um, the, the host of the show, um, showed some interest in the Jordan 1s that I had. And I almost had a sale right there live on air, which was pretty ridiculous. Um, I thought that was pretty funny. There was a bit of banter there with that. Uh, which I thought was really cool. But um, hopefully getting the message across, which I do with this channel, if, if people can just buy used clothing and, and used shoes and DVDs and books and everything else that I sell, because there is so much money to be made out there. If you just put in the time and the effort, you'll get the job done. So fingers crossed, uh, Dave can shoot me an email and we can get the Jordan sorted. Like I said to him in the interview, I would do mates rates for him. So fingers crossed he can come through with the goods and say that he'll go ahead. And that'd be pretty cool to say that I sold a pair of shoes to David Campbell on the Today Show live on national television. Regardless, it was a whole heap of fun. Uh, uh, really enjoyed the experience. Hope to do some more later on down the track. You just never know. But um, like I said, guys, nothing in that last little run. Thought I'd end the episode there with that story. Hopefully you enjoy it. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see you in the next episode on Sunday for a What's Sold. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Go check out the interview down below. Links in the description. We'll see you soon.